I am very weirded out by the people who started SoulCycle, their next iteration. This is their website called peoplehood.com. It says, welcome to peoplehood, a first of its kind practice designed to improve our relationships, starting with ourselves. So peoplehood is a practice like a workout for your relationships. Like how do we brand conversations so we can charge for it? What you're talking about is people sitting in a room talking and you're going to brand it like it's some brand new theory. It's like been going on since the dawn of time. Okay. Our 60 minute guided group conversations, we call them gathers, okay, gathers, have up to 20 participants and an intention. We speak freely and listen deeply. There's music and breath work to ease you into the experience. Whether you're looking to change old habits or build new connections, there's one thing we know, you'll walk away feeling better than when you arrived. Humans, we have a problem. Our happiness and health is more than anything connected to the quality of our relationships. And yet 61% of adults identify as lonely. I am one of them. Add me to the list, baby. Number two, listening is the magic pill. Active listening, listening without interrupting, offering advice or giving an opinion is the number one relationship building skill. Feeling heard boosts oxytocin and dopamine, our feel good brain chemicals. And three, peoplehood builds high quality human connections. Our mission is to equip people with space, support, and skills to build deeper, more meaningful relationships with others and themselves. Okay. So none of this sounds bad. However, this is how every cult starts. I'm just being real. Like this is how they all sound. I mean, usually these stories aren't being told until much later. The cult's already been broken up and people are in prison. And now they're like going to the beginning. But this is how they all start. We just wanted a place to meet up and have friends and talk about our feelings. And then all of a sudden we were, you know, we were flying off into the planets out out above. Okay, so if you wanted to join uh, one of these gathers, it's easy. Of course, it's always easy. (laughs) Sign up. Tell us all your trauma so we can advertise to you. I don't know. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but I never would, would like to tell a company my trauma. Sign up. Help us get to know you by answering a few quick questions. Log in. Check out our weekly schedule and decide which gather is right for you. You can come solo, meet new people, make time to process life and hear yourself think. Couplehood. Okay, now we're going to talk about the prices and all that in a little bit, but you can do yourself, which is a peoplehood package, or you can do couplehood, which is obviously you and your significant other. You can come with your partner, enjoy intentional time with the person that matters most. You can go in person at our flagship location in New York City or virtually on our digital platform. Rinse and repeat. Peoplehood is a practice. Coming weekly will help you change old patterns, build new habits, and feel more connected to yourself and others. Okay, so what everyone really wants to know, how that much frick does this cost, bitch? (laughs) That's what everyone's asking me right now. So you can get three pack intro three pack so first time members only of course you can do three gathers in 30 days either in person or virtual for 55 doll hairs wow what a what a steal and couplehood same thing same amount but for 85 dollars okay then after that you can get a monthly membership virtual only is 95 dollars a month now again these are group zoom calls at the on the digital side or in person in new york which in person in new york might might be a different experience. You might actually meet people and do that, but virtually I've done some of these group things online. It's very hard to actually like translate it to anything meaningful personally. Okay. But you, it, it costs 165 if you do in-person and virtual, and that gets you five in-person gathers per month. So about one a week and an extra unlimited virtual gathers, coffee or tea, concierge booking, exclusive access to special in-person programming and virtual events. Okay. And then again, for the couples, you can get a little, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's cheaper, but it's 250 a month for in-person and virtual or virtual only 145 a month. Again, this is not one-on-one therapy. There is no therapist present. This is just people meeting up in a space and them saying, we're going to set an intention here and let's breathe for a second before we start. (laughs) I'm not finding the value. And if you're familiar with uh, New York, it's in Chelsea. Our three-story sanctuary is a modern community center for people seeking a space to unload, share, listen, and connect. The building features a coffee bar, retail shop, and event space for special member programming. Woo! Okay, here are the guides. It says, our guides are a diverse group of humans. Wow, I'm so glad they went human. (laughs) 
I'm so glad they chose humans instead of the alternative. Our guides are a diverse group of humans, handpicked and trained to deliver an exceptional experience. Guides are storytellers, super connectors. Okay, that's what Gabby Bernstein calls herself. Calls herself. So, no thank you. DJs? Okay, hold on. <laughs> guides are storytellers, super connectors, DJs, and empaths with big hearts and even bigger smiles. Wow, I'm sold. I'm in. <laughs> You can, I can tell a DJ all of my trauma, please ooh, sign me up. They know what you're going through because they've been there too. Mm, I beg to fucking differ, excuse my language, but how, how can you guarantee that they've been every, like how? No, thank you. Okay. And then here's the people from the thumbnail. These are the, the former soul cycle CEOs or I don't know, founders. And now, now they've decided to follow their true passions uh, into unregulated therapy. Isn't that the path? People do this success. So they have their business. Like what's her name? Jamie Kern Lima. She started It Cosmetics with her husband. She sold it to L'Oreal. And now she can't just go to Bermuda and sit on a beach and chill. No, she must become a self-help guru. Why? <laughs> Why do they all do this? They are not sad. I guess this is the truth. Like success in business, it's not enough. In 2006, we founded Soul Cycle. We realized that people came for the workout, but stayed for the connections they created in the studios. They found a community, a place where they belonged. When we left Soul in 2016, the world felt different. We were all connected, but felt oddly disconnected. So that's why we decided to make a trauma company on Zoom. Social, cultural, and technological forces were pulling us all apart, and the institutions keeping us together were losing relevance. People reported feeling isolated, lonely, and burned out. And then the pandemic hit. We spent three years researching how community, okay, again, we spent three years researching what? Googling how people best communicate with empaths and DJs. That's how we figured it out. Okay, we Googled for three years researching how communities form, how to bring people together. And we decided on chairs in a circle <laughs> and how feeling connected can affect our happiness and health. We became obsessed with creating a modern place to gather with an intentional focus on relationship building skills. We set out to create a group practice driven by peer-to-peer -peer connection, collaboration, and growth. The result is peoplehood. So here we are, the next chapter. We look forward to sharing it with you. Okay, let's watch the definitely unbiased, most likely, <laughs> wink, wink, uh, piece from the today show with hoda and jenna called In inside soul cycle wait inside soul cycle founders relational fitness group peoplehood and this is hot tea it's only got 425 views also morally i'm against this why i know this is like an entertainment news show it's not like a cnn you know like breaking news moment but like why do news programs, including the New York Times, have a wellness section where they just basically let these people run free and just bullshit about all these breakthroughs and stuff with like zero oversight, pushback, real stats and figures. Like all of these news outlets seem to have this. Why? Focusing on the idea of making space for you. And Donna found a place that's helping people not only connect with themselves, but with complete strangers as well. Yeah. You guys know, I mean, living and working in New York City, it's definitely a privilege, but it can also be isolating. So I was looking for a new way to connect in a community setting, and I found just that. Lately, life has felt like a freaking giant whack-a-mole game. I'm trying to find my way back to the most honest version of myself. How am I doing really very emotional right now. How am I doing? Really? If you need to go to therapy, go to therapy. Like, I don't know what, like, I just really have a problem with people saying, first of all, people will always say therapy doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay. But then create literal therapy <laughs> without any of the, uh, extra parameters that make it safe and a safe, an actual safe space for people. Like there's, I could join this group, right. For a hundred dollars a month or whatever, show up and then decide based on what everyone shares to try to manipulate them, to get them to buy my course or whatever. There's nothing holding me back from doing that. Right. I hate it when people are like, I, therapy doesn't work, but I go to a self-help group called peoplehood it's like you're in therapy but it's just a bad version of it that's probably gonna hurt you and manipulate you it's a question posed to 16 total strangers in a group setting called peoplehood 
I come from a family that loves to talk and sometimes we talk over each other and this really teaches you to give the other person the opportunity to share. There's no qualms, no pretense, there's no need to impress. It's the brainchild of Julie Rice and Elizabeth Cutler, the entrepreneurs behind the boutique fitness brand SoulCycle. We began to think, what would it look like to create a product that was without the bikes, but still with all the connection. When they sold their enormously successful company in 2016, they each received $90 million. And now they've launched a new venture designed to strengthen personal connections. It's a 60 minute conversation experience. Conversation experience. You're sitting in a room and you're maybe doing a light meditation and you're talking about your feelings. This is not revolutionary. I, I don't think this is gonna make you not lonely, honestly. All it's gonna do is open you up and make you vulnerable in a group of people you don't know if you should trust or can't trust. And then what? And then what? Like, that's the thing. It's like in therapy, you open all these wounds, but you're with a professional that help you navigate it and stay grounded during it. Like, this is just, if you don't know what you're doing, it's dangerous in the sense of you just go home and now you're like, oh, I just shared my deepest fears with this group. And now they all know my information. And now I don't know what to do. Oh my God. And... I don't know. I just find it weird. This is not, this is nothing. They're trying to brand it as something like, oh, did you know that you we created this new experience called sitting in a room and talking? And then, of course, conversation. And our guides are what we're calling super connectors. They are not therapists. This is not therapy. Um, this is really peer to peer support. They call it relational fitness. The Good. skills that come along with relational fitness are listening empathy and understanding. I'm excited to strengthen my pause muscle and my listening muscle. It's hard. It's hard to not think about what I'm reacting to what this person's saying. I'm thinking about what I'm going to say next. I'm already in another place. And so to just really listen to what someone else is saying just for a short period of time is it's actually such a generous act. And prices start at $55 for a three session intro pack. I tried my gather at their flagship location in New York City and led with honesty. I'm really spending for personal time on celebrating my friends. All my friends are getting married, they're getting engaged. And though I'm not someone to completely follow others, it's sometimes you feel there is a void. And so I'd like to make space for authentic connection. Our guide, Juliana, led us through a group share. The idea is to speak freely without anyone interrupting or responding. How are you going to do that? Because it's an hour. There's like 15 people in there. So you have like, what, two minutes max if you're going to do anything else, maybe maybe four and get feedback and all that. I feel like that's a difficult feat. Um, also, I want to know what her qualifications are. What She's a super connector. Okay, Juliana, Why? What what does she do? What did, what course did she take? What lessons does she learn? What skills does she possess? That's what I want to know. The idea is to speak freely without anyone interrupting or responding. Simple gestures of snapping and touching your heart are suggested to show your empathy. Uh, one thing that's true for me is that I'm baby free for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really grateful to be able to have the job I have and do what I do have the relationships I have in my life, but sometimes I can feel lonely. Oh my gosh, all that, that touches me. I feel, I feel seen, I feel heard. <sighs> okay, I know I'm like a fucking bitch, right? I, we all can just agree on that, okay? <laughs> but like, I just roll my eyes because I went through something similar like this it, locally. I talked about it a few times here where it was two hours a week, it was, an hour of group coaching and an hour of yoga. And it was for six weeks. And it was like my first introduction into this whole world. And it almost like, you know, really ruined me, honestly, before I started to realize like, wait, I'm getting indoctrinated slowly over time. Um, but that was my first introduction was like doing something like this, putting myself out there and going, okay, I'm going to try something new and I'm going to be more positive And this is going to be a wonderful experience. And then I started to share all this stuff and like, within six months to a year of that first entry point, which is what this seems to be, 
I was then now doing one-on-ones with the you know leader who had no qualifications either. And now she's telling me that she's like an oracle that can read my mind and that she can go into my soul and like heal my body parts. I'm like, oh no, like what did I get into? You know, I just spent like, I just spent all this emotional energy on this person who's telling me this stuff I don't believe in. And I, I, now I have friends in here that if I leave, I'm not gonna be friends with them anymore. That's exactly what happened is I left, like I don't talk to any of them anymore. So it was a temporary feeling of like connection and like, oh, empathy, I have empathy for you. But long-term, I don't talk to any of them anymore. And they don't really talk to anyone unless you're in the group and you keep paying for all the fucking things and you keep going on the retreats and going to the classes. So yeah, this is why I roll my eyes because I'm like, they're like so caring until you don't pay your membership anymore. And then they're not going to invite you in because you're poor. (laughs) They're going to be like, bye, babe. See you later. Bye. And then we broke out into one-on-one sessions, which was surprisingly moving for me. So, um, I'm a little bit anxious about the future. I was telling Kiara I miss my parents at night. That sometimes what keeps me up. And then I realized that part of that is because I have so much love to give and I feel like that's sort of stalled and thwarted sometimes and I don't know where to put that. After this class, I feel at peace and I feel more present than I did when I went in there. Well, what keeps me coming back is just the connection with self and with like the world at large. I get a chance to like meet myself over and over again. My takeaway is that everyone has something going on and that if we can collectively treat people with that in the back of our minds, the world might be a better place. Grown woman discovers empathy, (laughs) discovers All humans have their own lives and we all intertwine. Wow. Yeah, and I want to reiterate, it is not therapy. And we spoke to a psychiatrist to find out what she thought of this new idea. And she agreed. While it's not a substitute for therapy, there is no doubt that being social is good for mental health and sharing open conversations can boost well-being. And I experienced that. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like everything is over the phone. Yeah. So to have that kind of face-on-face open connection yeah. is what people are so longing for. Face-on-face is... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And sometimes you just want to speak to a stranger with empathy to, like, finish your thought, complete the thought, feel the feel. Kind of when you talk in circles, you're able to figure out what it is that you're really feeling in that moment. And that's certainly how I felt. You said it. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got something. That was awesome, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. I think the intention may be good. And I think honestly, like Waco, probably the intention was good at one point, you know, going into, I'm sure Scientology had a wonderful intention to help humanity at one point when it was starting. And it goes out of control because there aren't those fail safe things, those safety measures, those precautions, those ethics put in place because it's just a free for all. Let's make money. It's capitalistic, baby. Let's put some beige on the wall and get people in here and start paying a membership. Um, That's when it can get out of control because there's not those things in place, making sure that that doesn't happen. So that was, uh, that was today with Hoda and Jenna. That's their take on what's going on. Let's look at the New York times. Here's another look at the room. (laughs) Revolutionary. So they say soul cycle without the bike. Here comes peoplehood. For their second act, the fitness entrepreneurs Julie Rice and Elizabeth Cutler are building a company centered on workouts for the self. Since last summer, a startup in beta mode has been soliciting volunteers to take part in 55-minute sessions called Gathers, where strangers discuss their deepest hopes and fears. Okay, that's the part that I'm like, red flag, red flag. Can it just be about like, hey, what do you guys think about flowers? What do you guys think about the weather today? That's how real I think friendships develop for the most part naturally over time. I don't think going immediately and meeting a bunch of strangers and going, here's my deepest trauma is helpful to you or to them, honestly. But it's always, it always is because it keeps you emotionally engaged. I think it's like the deepest fears and hopes part, because if you're crying and you're having an emotional experience, it's going to feel revolutionary. It's going to feel different but that's how they get you to come back, but it's manipulative. 
because they're forcing you to think these things. I think it's the same thing with any conference, with the Tony Robbins conference. They have people talking into the microphone, sharing these deep, dark things, and the whole room is moved by it. But long-term, those problems are still there with those people. So far, nearly 1,000 people have taken part. On a recent night, I was one of the 20 volunteers who logged on to a remote session moderated by Shamika Jones, an actress, dancer, and model. Okay, so so Shamika's qualifications apparently is actress, dancer, and model who peoplehood speak is a super connector. Yeah, that's, that's who I wanna tell my trauma to, a model and actor. <laughs> Nothing wrong with her necessarily, but why are you qualified to hold or talk about anyone's biggest hopes and fears? Okay, wearing a sweatshirt with PPLHD across the front, so that's peoplehood without the vowels, <laughs> so modern, right? Across the front, Miss Jones had an infectiously upbeat presence. I'm sure it's all going to be toxic positivity. After leading us through a series of breathing exercises, she introduced the topic of the day, uncertainty. Oh, Lord. Okay. Before the discussion got underway, she set the ground rules. If you are not the person speaking, you are supposed to listen actively without interrupting. Okay, fair. To express support for a speaker, you were to use one of three responses. Snapping. Okay, that's, that's what that is. Placing your hands over your heart to bring the attention to you. Okay, sorry, sorry. To show that you're an empath. Okay, got it. Oh, hold on. Or that you're a DJ. <laughs> Use this hand, this hand signal if you're a DJ <laughs> while someone's talking. <laughs> or raising your hands, palms facing the screen. What is that supposed to be? Yes, praise you, praise you, girl. Thank you for sharing that about your biggest hopes and dreams. Okay. So Jones gave them a discussion prompt, but how I am really feeling is blank. <laughs> to fill in the blank, group members expressed their anxieties about the war in Ukraine, the lingering effects of the pandemic, and the return to a pre-2020 work setup. During this portion of the gather, which took 20 minutes, I was trying to be a good peoplehood person. I snapped. I placed my hands over my heart. At one point, while trying to juggle active listening and coming up with the correct response, I accidentally did jazz hands. Next, we were separated into pairs. Each person was instructed to speak for three minutes uninterrupted. The prompt this time, what keeps you up at night? <laughs> Okay, this is just them forcing you to have these emotional outbursts. Oh no. Once we had all shared our 3 a.m. anxieties with a stranger, we were given a new partner for another prompt. Name something you're looking forward to. Okay, it's a little better. Six minutes later, we returned to the full group to share our reflections. Then we did some light stretching to the strains of soothing music. Class dismissed. Ooh, <laughs> very exciting. Selling connection. Okay. Miss Cutler and Ms. Rice see peoplehood as a natural successor to Soul Cycle, which became a phenomenon because it's made customers feel as if they were sculpting not just their bodies, but their selves. The chain's devotees wear Soul Cycle gear as they pedal in unison on stationary bikes in candlelit rooms under the tutelage of guru like instructors who shout out messages of empowerment. What Elizabeth and I found at SoulCycle was that people came because they thought they wanted to get in better shape, but ultimately what they found in those rooms was connection. We click, quickly learned the product we were selling was connection with other people. And it's a great way to keep people hooked when they're not getting results, right? It's like, well, now I feel like all my friends are here. I can't leave and I'm not getting results I want, but I don't want to, you know, hurt anyone's feelings or I shared a lot. Now I feel emotionally, you know, vulnerable. So I need to keep going back to, to feel better. It's like, eek. Uh, a decade later, she continued, we realized that connection should be its own product. Oh Lord. Capitalism at its finest, right? We are modern medicine for the loneliness epidemic. You're one facility in Chelsea, New York that costs over a hundred dollars to go in person and do these virtual. You are you are the modern medicine for the loneliness epidemic. Give me a fucking break. I'm sorry. This is so ridiculous. The first location, so now they're still talking about Soul Cycle in this part, just so you know. In case I got lost in translation. The first location was a former dance studio tucked behind the lobby of an Upper West Side apartment building. Soul Cycle soon became a much talked about chain. In 2011, the luxury fitness company Equinox swooped in and bought a majority stake. Before leaving their active roles in the company in 2016, Rice and Cutler received paydays of $90 million each. Now with peoplehood, they're back in startup mode. 
quote, we are thinking about how we put this in the zeitgeist in a way that makes it joyful and uplifting and meaningful and also create a brand around it that makes it cool to work on your relationships. Go to therapy. Okay, sorry. The headquarters are in a three-story building now under renovation in Manhattan's Flatiron District. On one wall, a message reads, confidentiality is a promise we make to each other. What is said in the room stays in the room. Okay, I'm glad that that's there. What if I don't follow that? What happens to me? And how are you going to figure it out that it was me and not the other 19 people who shared your secrets to my vlog (laughs) or whatever? Ms. Cutler and Ms. Rice will also sell peoplehood merchandise, of course, including prayer candles, caps, tote bags, and sweatshirts. They decline to say what the cost of a session will be. Okay, so we already know that. And they have gotten, uh, or how much money they have gotten from investors in a recent fundraising round. Why not? What's wrong with that? Marketing materials shared with investors are peppered with gung-ho spiritual speak and startup jargon, including references to peoplehood's digital and physical sanctuaries. Okay. And the two founder superpower of finding, training, and managing connection rock stars to scale human experience is nothing sacred. Is is the human experience? We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna find rock star connection rock stars to scale human experience. I'm horrified. I really hate it here. I don't I don't want to do this anymore. I can't. I yearn for a time where this is ridiculed and ripped apart and people just reject it immediately and go, no, this is not what we're doing. But yet we're here funding this shit. I don't get it. I mean, I get it. It's money making and it gives rich people no offense. I mean, I know rich people have issues and want to make friends too, but it gives rich people this, this, I don't know, this like advantage, like, oh, only people who can afford a hundred and something dollars a month deserve to like have friends. Like, I don't know. I don't know. A little woo woo. Uh Uh-oh, Rachel, where are you? I'm a big time hippie and I'm very woo woo. The germ for the idea of peoplehood came along early in the soul cycle days when Cutler woke up filled with anxiety about her new life as an executive and entrepreneur. Fumbling with her phone in the dark, she did a Google search for life coach. Within a week, she and Rice started meeting regularly with Meredith Haberfield, who runs a coaching and leadership development firm. Okay, let's look at her in a minute. Actually, let's look at her now. This is called Think-Human, Unleashing the Soul of Your Business. Okay, I can see why they liked her. Rally individuals, electrify cultures, and deliver breakthrough performance, coaching, training. So basically, she had a panic attack, and instead of realizing, like, maybe I should work on my life here and seek therapy. No, life coach. Okay. I've been there. Can't lie. I've been there. Okay. But I didn't, I didn't uh, continue down that road. (laughs) I eventually got into the right place. Anyways, once I gave them the idea of not having a lumpy carpet where things get swept under the rug, said Haberfeld. So that's the life coach who is now a peoplehood advisor. Oh, that's always good. That's always good when you're, you know, your life coach becomes a business partner. That's when you know that they'll give you honest advice for sure. When they're definitely invested in the success of your business. Uh Uh-huh. They were deeply committed to having the kind of relationship with each other marked by transparency, personal responsibility, accountability, and real conversations. Spin forward to 2019, Cutler was investing in startups and advising entrepreneurs. Rice was the chief brand officer at WeWork. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Okay, now it's all now it's all connecting. Now it's all super connecting. Okay, so what failed at WeWork for the same reasons that this is probably gonna fail epically and like a lawsuit or some sort of craziness. She was at WeWork reporting to Adam Newman, which we all know if you watch the WeWork documentaries, if you're familiar with the WeWork saga, he was making this culture, making it seem like WeWork was this mystical unicorn that was transforming the world as a tech company. But in reality, he was gaslighting all of us. It was just a real estate company. It was literally just empty buildings where they would put millennials on laptops. Like, come on, get a grip, everybody. Okay, now it's all making sense. Okay, a role in which she came up with the made by we slogan. Ah, so you're the culprit here. Okay, 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 okay. Cutler and Rice had become concerned about the state of discourse in America, not just on social media, but at the dinner table. (laughs) And they started hashing out their next big thing in earnest. 
When the pandemic hit, they consulted with scientists, psychologists, spiritual leaders, and therapists to develop the gathers. Okay, good, but not good enough, in my opinion. To put scientists, psychologists, therapists on the same level as spiritual leaders, I don't think is fair. I don't think is true. And I don't think like a scientist has to look at the data and say, this is where I've come to this conclusion. I've gone to school for all this time. A spiritual leader goes, I think this, (laughs) and I'm glad that they consulted, but why aren't the therapists involved in the gathers? Like facilitation, like you can consult all day, but if they're not there in the room, are they really helping? Have they helped? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Last summer, they recruited friends and friends of friends to attend the first peoplehood sessions. It's a little woo woo. And I really have felt an impact in a very positive way, said Julio Alvarez, a 34 year old tech industry leadership coach who participated in pilot classes. Okay. So you're going to tell me that Julio, a 34 year old tech industry leadership coach, isn't going to hear all of your deepest fears and insecurities about, you know, business, whatever, and try to recruit you into his, you know, pyramid scheme course. The pausing, the breathing, the listening, the sharing, that is what we need more of in this world. We need health care as well. Can you help us with this first? <laughs> Carolyn Carey, 60, a friend of Cutler's who lives in Carleton, Georgia, has attended both types of gathers offered by the company, sessions for individuals like the one I attended and those meant for couples. Quote, it's like yoga for the mind, and I need that, she said. Okay. Not everyone is sold in the idea, including myself. Gerald Shapiro, who who teaches would-be therapists as a professor of counseling psychology at Santa Clara University in California, warned of the dangers inherent in support groups led by people who are not trained to screen and lead group therapy participants. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald, for pointing out the fucking obvious. Quote, I can't tell you how complex and intricate being a group therapist is. Thank you. I cannot imagine. There seems to be a need for a lot of forethought and training. He added that in his view, a company that offers classes similar to group therapy sessions that are not led by mental health professionals would be, quote, pushing boundaries, which from a professional standpoint is scary. Again, thank you. Speaking as a rational person, I appreciate that. Asked about the issue, Rice said that peoplehood isn't meant to replace the work of psychologists and psychiatrists. Quote, it feels therapeutic, but it's not therapy. It's vitamins, not medicine. Okay, glad, but still people are possibly not in therapy. So it's like they're treating it as a replacement. So you might still run into those issues. Okay, so they say they put their guides through a very thorough training process. They attend many days of training and they practice many weeks before they are put on the schedule. They continue to be audited and have additional training each and every week. Okay, but what training? (laughs) Where? They're not therapists, so it can't be as much as therapists would have training wise. Miss Jones, the leader of the session I attended, said she had benefited from peoplehood training. Quote, I thought I was a good listener, she said, but I found out I was trash. (laughs) Tara Isabella Burton, who studied the religiously unaffiliated in her 2020 book, Strange Rights, New Religions for a Godless World, has written that many people who have lost trust in institutions will put their faith in Instagram influencers specializing in self-care. Yep, I agree with that. A center devoted to self-improvement and community expertly marketed and built on the model of a high-end fitness chain could find a large audience, she said. Peoplehood sounds like a natural culmination of how we think about spirituality and commerce in 2022. The author, Amanda Montel, who argued that SoulCycle played a churchy role in the lives of its customers in her 2021 book, Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism, said she was skeptical of the company in the works from Cutler and Rice. Quote, putting your physical fitness in the hands of spinning instructors feels less of a risk than putting your spiritual, psychological, and emotional health in the hands of someone trying to build and scale a giant business. Uh, Yes. Amen. Oops, wrong one. Let's go to their Instagram, Peoplehood Instagram. It's called A Place to Grow Personally Together. Okay, here's the merch you can buy. Of course, it starts in May 2023, e-commerce. Uh, it's now open inside, uh, or inside of the New York store, but you have to wait for the e-commerce. Love is how we treat each other. Wow. Profound. Peoplehood. I bet these are $70 plus each item. Okay. Let's meet one of the peoplehood guides. If my personality could be an accent, I'd be an Aussie. 
My name's Tiss and today we're at Peoplehood and we're gonna do a gather together. <laughs> My name is Tess and it's not short for anything, it's just Tess. Tess Renee Koenig or little six-year-old me was Tess Renee Koenig because I had so many speech impediments when I was younger but I picked them off. Atlanta is home but I have been in New York City for 12 years so according to Carrie Bradshaw that makes me an official New Yorker. Y'all, playlists are my love language. Is that like the most white girl? Playlists are my love language. Playlists really are a way that I show love. I love music. I think one of my superpowers just being, having been a yoga teacher for about six, seven years is that I am really good at finding that music that doesn't have any lyrics, but still makes you feel something. I like the music that's like, you don't even realize it's in the space until all of a sudden it's time to switch as a speaker and listener. And you're like, wait, what is this good beat? I wish I had my phone on me so I could shazam it, but oh shit, it's in the locker because that's where our phones go when it gathers. My favorite color is anything bright. I'm thinking like sunrise. Okay, I mean, again, I don't know what qualifies her. She's a yoga teacher. Okay, I'm also a yoga teacher, technically. I did the training, the 200 hour training. Can I solve your mental health problems? No, I cannot. <laughs> there was a really pretty one today. So yeah, like pinks, oranges, yellows, bright. Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Peoplehood is a space where we work on ourselves, where we can grow, where we embrace not being stuck in something. The music's too loud. I'm sorry, I can't deal. Instagram needs to fix that problem. Okay, this is her page. She's a yoga, she's yoga plus wellness coach, of course. Balanced living, menu, movement, mindset, meditation, teacher at this yoga studio. So it seems like a great way to recruit people to your yoga studio, yoga classes to get them to join your your courses. You know, it's a prime picking. They got 20 people in there sharing all their deep fears. Now you go, did you know that I actually teach a yoga class and have a course? I can like do one-on-ones with you. Again, seems like you're in the place to be manipulated because you're being vulnerable, but these people aren't qualified to make sure to step back ethically to, you know, make you not feel pressured to buy something and go, I can fix that problem you brought up in group today or in gather today. Hmm, I have my own thing. Gather schedule is live, peeps. Jump on it. Okay. It says codependent. <laughs> it's one of the labels here. <laughs> and a scary three-eyed face. And so you can go at 8 30 9 30 12 30 6 30 or 8 okay and then says what is one of your big regrets do you suffer from imposter syndrome and what talent areas questions to self what are great ways to spend time with your family okay again just seems a little manipulative to me the tiktok is pretty slim and they're just starting i guess so there's only like four four things so it says uh we talk freely and listen deeply Okay, so how am I doing really? This is Shamika. So she's the one that is the actress and the, what was it? Actress and dancer or something. Uh, so she's one of the super connectors. In this moment, I am pretty lit. I'm going to my birthday weekend. So I'm real, I'm feeling, I'm lit. I don't know. I'm feeling like if glitter could turn up on the inside of me, that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm and drunk. I think it feels so good because there are so many things right now in my world that are a freaking disaster. Okay. That's dramatic, but that's how I feel. It feels like no matter how much work, passion, energy, time, I invest in them. They're not going, they're not turning out in my favor. Um, so there's a temptation. There's a little heaviness on my heart. Um, you know, going into the holidays, not feeling like, Ooh, the way my checking and my savings is though. Um, or <sighs> the relationships that I have with some of my family members don't feel very jolly. Um, or the fact that my husband is in a lot of physical pain right now and I can't change it. There are a lot of things I think right now that make me feel a little heavy but I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the delight that I have in my heart as I get ready for a new birthday because there's so many people that didn't make it to this birthday. So I'm really excited. And no, I'm not going to tell you the number because it ain't none of your business. <laughs> um, so that's how I'm doing really. Okay, so. I dare you to stop your scroll for 60 seconds and hear me out. I can't do it. I can't. I must scroll ahead. On some things about trust and listening. 
The human brain is designed to detect trust and distrust in our everyday conversations. Trust is the first signal we look for to determine if we can open up or need to close down for protection. When our brain detects trust and safety, we turn off the fear-based messages from the amygdala. This is like so much content on TikTok. It's not even funny anymore, but it's like, I dare you for 60 seconds to listen to me, an unqualified person, talk about your brain from an article that I read on people.com wellness section. But alas, I will wait here. And then someone else says, I don't trust this pseudoscience cult-like bullshit. (laughs) And okay, okay, wait. And another one says, look up their privacy policies before joining. It is not confidential, very sketchy. Okay, wait, so hold up. We may share your information with select business partners so that they can provide you with special offers, promotional materials, advertisements, and other materials that may be of interest to you. However, we are not responsible for the privacy practices of these business partners, which may use your information for their own purposes. Okay, that's a problem. It seems that they're building it in so that they can share your information. But, you know, I'm assuming since SoulCycle did so well, they must have some marketing um, knowledge. So maybe that was one of the things they got people's data immediately and know how to use it well. But again, when it comes into the mental health part, that's where I start to go. Ethics, where are they? Is this about scaling human experience with no, you know, end in sight because it's a company? We have to grow regardless of people's health and possible issues when you have shareholders as the stakeholders that's when your you know your health your wealth your personality does comes in second to their needs at, for money that's peoplehood um there's not that much you know press about it work done about it videos to watch about it because it's so new uh basically just launched <clears throat> so we'll we'll keep an eye on it but yeah that privacy policy seems like maybe the true because I don't know how much people, how, you know, if they limit classes in person to 20 people a session, there's like, looks like there's four or five a day, both virtual and in, in person. That's not soul cycle across the globe money. And if that's what they're willing and wanting to create again, but with mental health, uh, they're going to have to scale it and make it be profitable right I would assume unless this is just like their fun project but like again if this is just your fun project why don't you put it for five dollars and have some actual people with like not actual problems I'm I'm sure people who can afford a hundred dollars a month have actual problems but it's gonna be that fine either people are gonna go broke going to these classes because they find them so helpful which I doubt but maybe they've been manipulated to feel that way or uh, it's going to be people who can afford things and they'll never get to experience people who have like financial issues as like a big issue in this world. And it's like, isn't that valuable? No, <laughs> it's not. It's not valuable. <laughs> Pretend those people don't exist. Okay. Okay.